Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's nice to hear voices when I say Shabbat Shalom, to hear somebody say it back. Um, as many of you know, my grandfather passed away this past week, so I want to dedicate my Torah this morning in his memory. When I was reflecting on his life, uh, I started looking at pictures and photo albums with my kids, teaching them more about him, although I'm blessed that they had were able to have a relationship with their great-grandfather. And when my son Noah, who's seven, started looking at pictures with me, he began to tear up. And when I noticed him crying, he quickly wiped away his tears and apologized. He said, sorry for crying. I asked him, why are you saying sorry? Why are you apologizing for being sad? And he responded with profound words of wisdom that in some ways only children can offer. Because I don't want you to have to take care of me when I'm sad, I wanna take care of you. As we learned earlier this morning in Parshat Shmini, Aaron's sons unexpectedly die. And we learn that our rabbis try to explain why, because we can't understand or accept or rationalize a theology as our own that would kill anyone. A God that would raise up this burning flame and fire to consume somebody for prayer, for sacrifice, for offerings, or really for anything. That's not our idea of God. We as a community, we as a society have dealt with far too much loss this year. Some who lived a full and long life, some taken from this world far too soon, all tragic. When Aaron hears that his sons had died, the Torah tells us the Dome Aharon and Aaron sat in his silence. When Sarah dies, the Torah tells us that Abraham rips his garments and wails for her. When Miriam dies, the Torah tells us that the well that sustained the Jewish people throughout the wilderness dries up. When Moshe dies at the end of Devarim, at the end of our Torah, we're told that all of Israel mourns and not another person came around who was quite like him. And yet here, Aaron doesn't mourn. He just sits in his silence. And we're left wondering why. He goes on actually to tell his remaining sons, his surviving sons, do not bear your heads, do not rend your clothes, essentially telling them to not mourn for their brothers either. And our rabbis again are quick to come to the conclusion that if God brought forth this fire, they must have done something wrong. So we cannot mourn for somebody in this context. I refuse to accept that because that's not the way human emotion works. I thought about what my seven-year-old said to me. In a weird way, maybe Aaron was telling his own sons, I need you to care for me now so please don't mourn. And then I'll let you mourn and I'll take care of you. The truth is Aaron was silent because there are no words to be said when somebody leaves this world. There are no words to console another. Traditionally in a Shiva home, we don't say anything at all. Shiva has become a bit of a social gathering for all of us at least in pre-COVID times. 
but traditionally one would enter a shiva home and just sit in silence until the mourner chose to speak. Because there were no words that we could say to comfort the mourner, we say traditional words of comfort, the tok shar of Eitzion Bushalai, may you find comfort among all the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem, knowing that it's truly impossible to find comfort when you mourn. And so Aaron sits in silence because there are no words that anybody can say and no words that he can say to quite make sense. Because we don't offer comfort with our words, we offer comfort with our presence. With all the loss over this past year, that's probably been the hardest part to not be able to have to extend our physical presence to one another. Even now, as we've adjusted to seeing each other or even coming together for Shabbat and socially distance, to not be able to hug or shake hands, to maybe occasionally resort to an elbow or even a foot touch, trying to find alternative ways to touch each other. to be present with one another. Our Haftarah, again, finds somebody unexpectedly dying. We're told that when Uzzah reached for the Ark of God and grasped it, he too suddenly dies. Here, though, the Torah tells us that King David was distressed. It doesn't tell us that he mourns. It doesn't tell us that he tears his garments. But I think that word really speaks volumes. The Yichar le David, that he was full of emotion, couldn't explain what he was feeling but knew that as he grieved, he didn't want to do so alone. And we've tried over this past year, year full of mourning, to be there for each other virtually, to have Shiva minion over Zoom, but we know it's not the same because it's our physical presence. And as I mourn my grandfather, I think about him. It was his physical presence. It was his hugs that made you fall in love with him. I think I got that from him, the hugging of strangers. I pray for a time when we'll be able to return to that reality. I think we're a long way off. But sometimes when we can't be physically with each other. When we know there are no words to say, we're left with doing what exactly Aaron did, just sitting in silence. And that's okay too. This year has given us many moments for silence. May we one day find the words to comfort each other again and be able to be present and comfort each other with our presence as well. Amen.